Dodge Imperial mounted spherical roller bearings feature a patented integral adapter mounting and removal system that makes this bearing easy to install and remove. This revolutionary system also provides a concentric grip for superior holding on the shaft. We'll be mounting a 1 and 15 16 inch pillow block imperial bearing. The tools required to mount this bearing include an Allen wrench, drift, hammer, marker, a micrometer, straight edge, and a torque wrench to tighten the base bolts once the bearing is mounted. Dodge also offers an imperial impact spanner wrench to simplify the installation process. Prior to bearing installation, inspect the shaft to ensure that it's smooth, straight, and clean. If a nick is found, remove the raised area with an emery cloth, sandpaper, or a Scotch-Brite pad to clean corrosion and fine nicks from the shaft. Apply a thin coating of oil or other rust inhibitor to the mounting area of the shaft. Now, ensure that the shaft is within commercial shaft tolerances. Due to our adapter mount design, standard commercial shaft tolerances can be used. All applications require a two-bearing system to operate properly. The Imperial product line is offered in both non-expansion and expansion versions. The non-expansion bearing should always be mounted first and is typically mounted on the drive side of the application. The expansion bearing is mounted last for positioning purposes. The bearing is equipped with a lock plate, which is secured to the face of the lock nut. Remove the button head cap screws with the Allen wrench. Remove the lock plate and set it aside. The lock plate will be reinstalled after the bearing is mounted. All adapter mount bearings require the load to be removed before mounting, to ease bearing drive up and to minimize required mounting force. This can be done with a sling, jacks, or supports. While holding the adapter sleeve, rotate the lock nut counterclockwise one to two turns. This will allow the adapter to fully expand. Slide the bearing to the desired position on the shaft. If the bearing does not slide onto the shaft easily, loosen the lock nut another one to two turns and repeat the process. Now, the bearing lock nut needs to be tightened to its zero reference point or starting position. The zero reference point is defined as the point when the clearance between the adapter sleeve, shaft, and bearing bore is removed, and all mating surfaces are in metal-to-metal -metal contact. This is achieved by tightening the lock nut clockwise using both hands, until the lock nut can no longer be rotated by hand. On bearing sizes 3 and 15 16 inch and larger, you can test to ensure the zero reference point has been reached by tapping on the OD of the nut with a hammer and attempt to rotate the nut using both hands. Once the zero reference point is achieved, mark a line on the face of the lock nut and adapter sleeve. It is good practice to mark the lock nut face in line with the slot on the adapter sleeve. Next, determine the appropriate amount of lock nut rotation required for mounting. This information is shown in the instruction manual supplied with the bearings. In the case with a 1 and 15 16 inch imperial bearing, the rotation of the lock nut from the zero position is 7 eighths to one turn. It is best practice to rotate the nut to the minimum number of turns required. Using a drift or imperial impact spanner and hammer, rotate the lock nut 7 eighths to one turn rotation from the marked zero reference point. Once the desired rotation is achieved, the bearing is mounted. Find a lock nut hole that aligns with a lock plate hole or slot. If the closest lock nut hole is beyond a lock plate hole, mark the adapter at the next closest lock plate hole. Tighten, not loosen, the lock nut to meet with the lock plate hole or slot. Ensure that you do not exceed the maximum number of turns noted in the table during this step. Next, put the lock plate on. Then, insert the lock washer and button head cap screws through the lock plate into the lock nut holes. The fixed bearing has now been properly mounted to the shaft. To keep the housing in position, loosely install the base bolts. The expansion bearing is mounted the same way as the non-expansion bearing. The only difference is positioning the housing with respect to the bearing to accommodate shaft growth due to thermal expansion and the movement of the bearing during installation. Follow the same mounting procedures as shown in the previous segment. Now, insert the base bolts into the expansion bearing housing. Make sure the bearing insert has been shifted in the correct direction in the expansion bearing housing so it will accommodate shaft thermal growth. Remove shaft support. 
Then, make sure that the bearing housings are aligned to the shaft within plus or minus one degree. Torque the mounting bolts to their required torque values published in the instruction manual. The bearing assembly has now been properly mounted. To dismount the bearing, you first loosen the base bolts of the bearings and remove the load from the shaft. Next, remove the button head cap screws and the lock plate. Now begin to rotate the lock nut counterclockwise using a drift or the impact spanner wrench and hammer. Continue to drive the lock nut counterclockwise until the bearing is released from the shaft. The bearing has now been properly dismounted. This concludes the mounting and dismounting demonstration of the Imperial Mounted Spherical Roller Bearing. For further information, please refer to the instruction manual MN3009. And for bore sizes 5 and 7 16 and larger, the Dodge Hydraulic ISAF Mounted Spherical Roller Bearing with its patented built-in hydraulic mount and dismount system is available.